Oh, howdy, ladies and gentlemen. What's happening out there? Michael Palmazano here. I hope you're having a great day. Today's a little squirrely for me. A little squirrely. But I'm back on my website, regardless. Albert Lee, Sweet Little Lisa by Red Pearl Telly has caught my attention. It's got fire. Hot, hot, hot. Albert Lee at his best. This is from Darren Voice from Ohio. Darren, thank you so much for being a subscriber on the website. This is for you. He says, one of the cleanest pickers ever. Hang on, because he's killing it. Here you go, sir. <laughs> Real quick, uh, this is a this is a cool form. It's a why won't you click away? Why won't you why won't you click away? Whatever, we'll figure this out later. It, there it goes. All right, one four five in C. So you got C major, F, G. Starts with a little Chuck Berry thing in C. Works its way down. What's cool about this is this quick change walk up to the four chord F. So it's C, and then again. Walk straight up to F each time, the four chord, then goes to G, and then hangs on the G twice as long. So it's it's not like it's got a, a, a regular turnaround, or it's a regular quick change one, four, five. It's kind of spicy. Check it out one time through. Oh, this thing is gonna make me freak out. I can't stand this stuff. Ain't nobody gonna make me sing. Make me do the wrong damn yep. thing. Sink in my head five. in a cold, cold dream. Right to the four. So good. Okay, let's see if we can't get some of this. Again, if you're new to this channel, broad strokes, not note for note. I'm learning this. At, I'm trying to figure out the concept of what the player may or may not be thinking on the fly here. Okay. Walking up to the four. So you're coming in. Your C pattern four here. C minor, right? We haven't. We haven't hit a major third in there. We haven't hit an E. We're E-flatting all day so far. Now that, so so it's so it's all C minor, right? Now when it gets to the five chord, what's he do? He walks up. So your five chord G you got this this little move. Grabs this little dyad. Okay, this is your root and major third of G major. So if you're in this little spot, right, there's your five, takes it down, four, and it sounds like it's just gonna keep descending. <laughs> so, something like this. So, root and major third of five, root and major third of four, Diad on C here. This is our tonic, but you're playing the fifth and the major third. No root, so second inversion, and this little. And then that, that. Going down and getting that C again here, 
Again, first inversion, so third leading, and then your root. So you got this kind of motion. Knowing your dyads and uh, all the little pieces of triads, you can outline those chords everywhere, is a key component of this. So then he immediately jumps, accentuating that C and B flat. So we're thinking kind of C mixo thing here, right? But then jumps up into C major, pentatonic land. So that's what you want to be thinking here. Pattern four minor, dyads down, right? Selling that little mixo there cleaning up with major. Broad strokes, ladies and gentlemen. Uh. So snappy. Either that. Again. You're over the five chord, aiming for that nine, which is the fifth of your five chord, always a good choice, right? Aim for a chord tone, sell that change. So even if you are a blues player, you play a lot of minor stuff, switch to major over the five chord because it'll allow you to easily target that nine. So all these little moves, it'll get you there. He's doing all those moves. Flirting, flirting with the C mixo thing just to brighten it back up to C major. That's the whole point. And that, uh, where are we here? No. So you got, you're implying the F, the six, Remember the six is the third of your four chord. Six is your four. Remember that, and the and the flat three here like this gives it that bluesy thing. And then again, I love that hot little roll. Off that nine, but it'll get to go down. I can't pick like that, flat pick like that. I got a hybrid. Whatever he's doing. It, it's, it's still that you're thinking. Minor in there, all those little moves. But then when it goes to the five, you're you're envisioning this right here. Third, fifth root of your five chord. There's your five. So you're moving this little down one step to focus there. That's your that's your overall move. Ah! Ah! <laughs> One more time. Uh. It's so clean. The picking is so clean. All right, let's keep going. Love that jump. I love that mix of right? It it's such a it's such a, a percussion first kind of approach. It's that it's that 
you're playing it straight, then you're triplets, then you're playing it straight, then you're triplets. But to but to get to get to but to but to get to get together, right? And finding the patterns that work with that, you'll find with a lot of these players that that's when they switch to that to that you know kind of triad that. Why am I not working? You know. Sometimes it just doesn't work. Jordan throws bricks some days. It's just, 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 who knows when it happens, why it happens. It just happened. Um, point is still the same. That if you're thinking in terms of triplets, you need a three-note shape to carry you over, right? Whether that's linearly or going across. When you're playing it straight, you know, with equal subdivisions in two instead of three, you can do things in patterns of two, right? You can equally subdivide. But f- focusing on that rhythmic displacement and finding the, the shapes and the patterns that allow you to do that, that's something that like country music really turned me on to. It, it's why once you start hybrid picking and thinking in terms of triads that you really can't go back because it's tied to the rhythmic pulse, right? It's tied to how you're feeling it and subdividing it and your digits just once you start thinking, oh, terms of three, terms of three, terms of two, terms of two, it just it changes you. It changes you. And watching him do it, though, just flat picking everything so clean, it's just, I mean, it's why he's outwardly. That I love. It's so simple that uh, uh, just right on the root. Just so many times I find myself uh, thinking about what notes to play instead of when to play them or how to play them, right? It's a constant thing to work on. And just starting with one note, C, you know, and having a bunch of different picking rhythms on one static note. It's such a simple thing that's so effective that it just, you lose sight of and you forget that it's an option because it's so basic, but it sells. You could spend a month dissecting all these licks. There's a little hybrid snap. Woo! Look at that grab at the end by the whole band. Okay, why is that important? Why is that important what I just what I just pointed out? Um, I talk about timing a lot on this channel and how to develop timing and why it's important and to think, like I just said, when to play instead of what to play, okay? There's a fundamental thing that happens when you're playing, uh, when you're trying to play in time, whether it's with a click or with the band. Okay. Everybody tells you to try to play soft and try to play relaxed. And can you can you play with it on time, directly with the click, directly relaxed, um, and be right on it? That's half. That's half of it. The other half is can you do it as hard and loud as possible? And why is that important? Because the harder you hit something, the longer you have to wait to start your attack. Let me repeat. The harder you hit something, if it's right here and it's on time, right? If I, versus the other hand, right? The one that went faster and harder had to wait longer. 
And the longer you wait, the more certain you have to be of where the beat is. So when you see a band hit hard like that at the very end, it's like a total total snag like that. That's how you know. That's 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 that that's how you know that they know exactly where the hell it is. I'm telling you, practice that in your own time. The drums, whatever. Play soft, play relaxed, that's fine. But I want you to also play as loud, try to stay in time playing as loud and as aggressive with your whole body as possible because you have to wait longer. So you have to be more certain of where the funk is, of where the beat is, of where the release is. Think about it. It's a life-changing concept. Anyhow, uh, Darren. Thank you so much for suggesting this, and thank you for taking my lessons and courses and supporting me and everybody else over at Guitargate. Uh, you make it all possible. It's why I put this page up. Albert Lee, so clean. Uh, loved it, loved it, loved it. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. If you like the vibe of this channel, please subscribe. It helps me out. If you want to be like Darren, join the community, post videos to this page, take some lessons and courses, I'd love to have you. It's the first link. It's called Guitargate. And it's all about just keeping this thing in your hands, trying to get a little bit better every day. That's my mantra. Try to live it and uh, do it with me. Cheers.